and not risky but very adventurous I do like to do um, a lot of outdoors if I would say um, so what was the last like outdoorsy thing that you did I went kayaking in Austin oh, in May yes it was very very fun when I, for my friend's birthday oh, and um, everyone else was pretty scared but I think that you know I had a little bit more control <laughs> of the situation so um, I think because because I'm like really comfortable I don't know how to swim I'm so sorry when you want to learn how to do that. But your life jacket's help, you know? Sure. So, um, yeah, that's that's something that I feel like that's very that's a very important part of um, me. And I think that that's what is kind of gearing me towards um, coming to this school, in a sense, mm -hmm. because I know that I'll be able to do the, those hobbies while I'm in medical school. Mm -hmm. I'm also passionate about mentorship. Um, I have been involved in a very vast amount of organizations in the sense of um, just giving back to the community and giving back to black and brown girls in my community. I think that the position that I'm in right now, it kind of gives them the representation that they need to see. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, the mentors that I had, the little that they were, I feel like they did have a very strong impact on me and the reason why I even want to, to pursue a degree in, in medicine. So, yeah, I think mentorship and just being outdoors all the time is very, very important to me. All right, so I'm going to ask some quick shame questions. Okay. <laughs> so what would you say is your greatest weakness and your greatest strength and why? My greatest weakness, I think, would be um, confidence in the classroom. Mm -hmm. I think that sometimes I find myself feeling overwhelmed in big classroom spaces mm -hmm. so that um, I feel like I can't a a ask a question that I want to ask the professor at that moment. But I think that in the past semester, I have been building confidence and asking questions. So I sit in the front mm -hmm. and I feel like I have more of a personal connection with that professor. And so when I do ask questions, I am getting the answers that I need mm -hmm. and I'm doing very well in classes now um, in comparison to when I wasn't as confident. Mm -hmm. In regards to strengths, I believe that I am a great leader in small groups. Mm -hmm. I think I'm very, I'm very capable of um, being able to delegate tasks and being able to communicate efficiently with my group in a, in, in a way that's very respectful mm -hmm. and, a, in, and in a way that's um, where I'm able to understand their roles and respect their roles and not overstep and micromanage them. So I think that's very important, especially um, if I want to become a physician in the future. Very important. So it's good that you pick up on that. Yeah. Right. So if you had to choose between clinical and academic medicine as a profession, which would you choose and why? Mm -hmm. um, what do you feel might, you might lose by being forced to choose? Hmm. If I could choose between clinical and academic, mm -hmm. I think I would choose academic strictly because I feel like being in an academic setting would force me to be up to date on guidelines. Okay. And it will also require me to be knowledgeable about my specialty in a sense where I'll be able to be a great teacher to the future um, generation of physicians. What was your second question? What do you feel you might lose by being forced to choose between either academic or clinical medicine? I think that with academic medicine, I would lose the ability to, I think, work with a team of future physicians. I think that um, in a clinical setting, I am the go-to person, but in a setting where, like the academic setting, I'll be able to um, collaborate with other physicians in the field also, and also be able to show the interns or MD residents 
um, what a case looks like and just how to navigate that patient case. Clearly, I'm biased. <laughs> <laughs> but I definitely agree. Okay. And as a physician, when you're working in academic medicine, since you have to teach to the students, mm -hmm. it also makes you a better teacher when you're dealing with your patients. You can explain things on like a deeper level mm -hmm. and you know um, how to teach things to your students so you can apply that to your patients and right. explain things. So. <laughs> what do you consider um, the most important or an, or just an important problem, social problem facing the United States today and why? The most important social problem I think facing the United States is the discrimination against black individuals in our country. I think that it stems particularly for me, something that I know that I have experienced, something that I probably will experience in the future, mm -hmm. is the res lack of respect that may come because I'm a physician of, a physician of color. Mm -hmm. I think that um, what, I'll be, what I'll be facing, yes, will be problematic, but it's something that will build character and will force me to realize that not everyone is treated equal in this country, but that doesn't, that doesn't necessarily mean that I have to reciprocate that. Mm -hmm. um, it'll help me to build patience um, and it will allow me the opportunity to be humble and understanding of people of different backgrounds. So, though it's very difficult as a person of color to live in this country, I think that it's a strength in a sense because mm -hmm. it helps me to be able to understand people from all backgrounds. So, so just I'm just gonna piggyback on that question. So, as a woman of color, how are you gonna face different obstacles within um, the medical profession when you get to become a physician or a resident, or just when you enter the hospital? Mm -hmm. How do you plan on handling those situations where you might be discriminated against mm -hmm. or stereotyped? Well, I think the first thing that I have to do is find my find women of color who have gone through the path that I've gone through mm -hmm. and ask them how to best handle that situation. I think every situation is different. Mm -hmm. um, there's some things that um, I could probably would be able to handle um, personally, but then there's other things that I feel like if it is too far or too out of my comfort zone or something that I feel like it's out of my um, capacity to handle, I will definitely go to my administration and because I feel like I have that space, that safe space with them to share any um, harassment or assault or anything like that. So I definitely um, feel like I do have a voice of my own to stand up for myself, but I, I understand how important it is to um, report harassment and report uh, different um, inappropriate behavior. Um, so how do you feel about treating a patient who has been tested positive for HIV? Well, during my internship this summer, I actually have been able to, I've been more exposed to HIV positive patients. I think that the most important thing is to not separate them from this, or not deliver a different standard of care to them. Mm -hmm. I think treating them with the same standard that I treat all of my other patients is key. Um, also being sensitive to the fact that HIV positive patients do have a stigma surrounding them and allowing them to feel comfortable in my in my care is very important and also knowing that though it's not just me treating them it will be a whole team and informing my team of the care that I want to provide to my patient um, so I think having a collaborative effort for sure is very important and just being human speaking to them as a human is the most important thing so what special qualities do you possess that you think separates you from all the other medical school candidates that I get the pleasure of speaking with today? <laughs> um, what sets me apart? I think that my background in the medical field in the sense of the exposure that I've had working in the ER and working with different people, different backgrounds as a mentor, um, I've been exposed to a variety of cultures. And I think that in the medical field, it gets it's easy to stereotype people because you've seen a certain set of people in a certain space. And I think it's very important to have an open mind to all cultures. And I think because I was exposed to different cultures at a very early age and I am of a um, minority background, I'm able to understand patients on a different level, I think, than other people may be able to. So I think my, my background, my um, cultural background definitely helps to helps me in providing me with that asset to your institution. Um, so this is a blind interview, okay. so I didn't like look at any of your application. They just kind of threw me in here. It's like, okay. hey, interview this thing. <laughs> so some of these questions I'm sure you were at, you um, mentioned in your personal statement okay. or whatever Bobby's going to ask you. Okay. So what motivated you to pursue medicine? I initially wanted to pursue, pursue 
um, teaching. So I think the underlying theme of teaching in medicine is that mentorship slash education that can continue to have um, with the next generation of students that will be under me. I think that that's one of the most important things and if I want to instill change in a community of people who are underserved, that educating physicians about the disparities that exist in that community is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like medicine provides me the opportunity to do just that, as well as practice and provide care to those who are underserved. Awesome. So I am tired of asking you questions. <laughs> so at this point, I want you to ask me all the questions that you want. Okay. So I have had a really great time here during my interview day at the Target oh, nice. School of Medicine, that. and I did have a few questions. Okay. So if there was one thing that you could change about your institution or your curriculum at your school, what would it be? Um, let's see, so I'm going to give you the honest answer, okay. <laughs> since I feel like you know we developed a little, a little, a little relationship here. So um, the biggest thing for our university is I want it to reflect the patient population that we serve. Mm -hmm. So I feel that um, hiring a more diverse faculty, whether that's religion, um, gender, sexual orientation, race, I feel like we could do a better job at hiring more diverse individuals. So we do a pretty good job of it, but it's not perfect, and mm -hmm. I like perfection. Mm -hmm. So I would <laughs> aim to just hire more individuals who have a more diverse background. That way, you can actually relate to the patients that you see and that you serve. Okay. And what attracted you to this school when you were applying, I guess, for jobs or being offered this position? What attracted you to this school? Um, honestly, the city that we're in, mm -hmm. the patient population was amazing. Um, also, the collaborative environment that we're in. Um, if you do go to the school, you'll see the students as well as the faculty. Mm -hmm. We're very community oriented. We like to work together. We like to help each other out. And that is something that I looked for in an institution. So mm -hmm. probably the community and the collaborative, the collaborative environment is one of the most things that I like about this school. Right. Okay. And do you feel like you're able to have a work-life balance while you were in medical school? And do you think that this um, school um, supports people who have families? Definitely. So we do offer um, the opportunity for students to stream mm -hmm. or they can come to class. So if you do have a family or if you're not able to live close to our school, we do have the opportunity for you to stream lectures. You don't have to come to class. Mm -hmm. There are certain days where there's classes that are uh, that are required and recommended for you to come to, mm -hmm. but you did. That's not always. So right. having that um, option to stream classes helps a ton. Mm -hmm. If you're a mother or if you're a father, if you have to stay at home with the kids, if you have to take care of your grandma or mm -hmm. your mom, like there's, we're very, um, we're very open to supporting students who have other obligations and who can't necessarily make it to class all the time. So yeah, I feel like we're pretty good at that. Okay. And I think my last question would be, um, what is the school's uh, yes, view or support system when it regards to mental health, in regards to mental health? That's a very, very question, because you know the suicide <laughs> rates for med students are pretty high, right. as well as physicians and residents, so that's actually a very good question. So our school has a mental health service um, center, mm -hmm. I guess. We have resources, so um, we have therapists who you're more than welcome to contact 24-7. You can make appointments with our psychiatrists and our psychologists. So we definitely have a lot of resources open to you. Mm -hmm. Also, during um, school, we have certain days and certain lectures geared towards mental health and how we can better care for you and your needs as a medical student. So there's many opportunities for you to, and for you to come to us mm -hmm. and um, just talk to people if you need to. Okay. Well, thank you so much for taking the time out to interview me. No I really love this school, and hopefully we get a chance to run pa pa cross paths again. Yeah. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Good luck. <laughs>